Hola and、uh, welcome to our sixteenth episode of the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show. I think it's sixteenth. I'm not really sure because it's been a while.、Um, I am Julio Panisello. I'm the Dream Alchemist at Ruthless Painters, and I am going to be the host of this episode. So,、um, yeah, the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show is a weekly. Live presentation featuring the conceptual and stylistic inspiration behind our painting webinars.、Uh, we introduce the theme of the next painting collection, and we talk about the inspiration behind it.、Um, and we do so by bringing up、um, some、uh, art history references and also a bit of、uh, commentary. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, everyone.、Um, so you can find all the episodes on our Instagram page and also on our YouTube channel. We have them all there. So、um, yeah, and、uh, let me just uh, start um, sharing um, the first、um, yeah the first slides. So、um, yeah, this week's、uh, webinar is going to be focused on Marie Antoinette. And、um, it's gonna be focused on her for a couple of reasons. So,、uh, October sixteenth, which is tomorrow, is、uh, infamous for being the day、um, when Marie Antoinette was、uh, executed. And we have a fascination、um, on Marie Antoinette,、um, and especially.、Uh, Uh, the day she was executed, <laughs> call us、um, gruesome. I don't know, but、um, yeah, as we were getting ready for、uh, the date,、uh, we noticed that Sotheby's,、um, the auction house,、um, featured this painting by French painter Anne Valayer Coster.、Um, it's a painting of a still life, and、uh, in the description. Um, Sotheby's、uh, announced or mentioned that、uh, the painter was one of Marie Antoinette,、um, Marie, Marie Antoinette favorites painter, favorites painter. Right? Yeah. So、um, we didn't know about that, but uh, uh, this was very ser serendipitous because we knew we were going to do something related to her, and then this painting came up. So we、uh, learned that Marie Antoinette had.、Um, Uh, royal painters and her favorite royal painters were all women.、Uh, so there were three in particular that they were very important, and they did a lot of portraits of her. They did a lot of portraits of her during the time that she was alive, and there's a reason for it.、Um, so the story of Marie Antoinette is a very dark one, and.、Um, It, you know, we we、uh, approach it in a very delicate way because obviously we are not、um, royalists and we are not anti-revolutionary、um, French Revolution, but there is something about Marie Antoinette, Antoinette that symbolizes、um, uh, something specific, and there is something about her execution that also symbolizes something、uh, that we want to talk about. So、um, let me just bring first、um, images of the three royal painters that were um, um, hired or working for Marie Antoinette. I think this one is Elizabeth Louis Vigée Lebrun, and、um, this one、uh, that I'm gonna present next Is the most famous royal painter.、Um, her name is、um, actually this is Elizabeth, <laughs> and then this one right here is Anne Valayer Coster, Coster. Yeah, so she's the one who painted the still life with flowers. So、um, yeah, in particular, this uh, painter, uh, this one Elizabeth,、um, she was the most famous, and she.、Um, Is known for quoting、uh, the following statement: "Women ruled before Marie Antoinette and were dethroned、um, after、um, she was executed." And and 
This is very important because as much as Marie Antoinette symbolized a lot of bad things, uh, excess and uh, inequality uh, or financial inequality and a lot of things that were attributed to her, which she had nothing to do with, by the way, her execution uh, uh, was also a symbol. And uh, in the words of Elizabeth, uh, the symbol was to put women back into their place. Marie Antoinette, um, you know, uh, uh, became a queen very young and she was not really interested in uh, royal life, although she took advantage of it and she broke a lot of molds. Um, uh, queens at the time were supposed to pop babies uh, nonstop. Uh, Marie Antoinette's mother had 16 uh, babies and um, so Marie Antoinette only had four. And um, that was uh, very uh, uh, revolutionary at the time. And um, it was one of the reasons why she was deeply, deeply hated, Marie Antoinette. This is one of her portraits, uh, by the way. She was hated for not being a good wife. She was hated for not being a good mom. She was hated um, because she uh, was believed to be too political and also because she was believed to have too much power. Uh, she was hated because she was an immigrant. Uh, she was Austrian. So when she came to France, no one really saw beyond her nationality. And um, so she symbolizes the worst of uh, pre-revolutionary times. And uh, did she have a lot to do with it? Um, well, she wasn't making policy. She was not really involved with any decisions. And um, she wasn't the only one who was taking advantage of the system. But uh, we believe that because she was who she was, or, or because of the gender that she had, uh, she was blamed for a lot of things. Again, we're not royalists, but you know, we, we, we love the fact that her demise and her hate, um, it, it's something that symbolizes a lot of the hate that we think um, it's happening right now. <laughs> so um, this is the thing. Uh, during her life, because of uh, the hate, the deep hate that people had against her for not being a good, um, a good woman, um, there were a lot of um, there were a lot of people that started rumors, um, and um, a lot of um, the rumors were uh, materialized into. Um, uh, at the time call, uh, it would be perfectly described as fake news. So uh, there was a barrage, an avalanche of pamphlets, cartoons, caricatures of her uh, describing uh, all her negative uh, treats. And guess what? Um, people thought she was a lesbian. So there were a lot of things uh, related to her sexuality that she was a prostitute, that she was a nymphomaniac. Um, also, people um, thought that she was possessed, that she was inhuman, that she was a demon. So um, the, um, uh, the barrage of propaganda was endless, so nonstop. So all of the rumors that tried to uh, dehumanize her as a woman, uh, not following the rules, had um, everything to do about characteristics that were they, they were non-human. So this is an example of the queen and her husband, uh, Louis XVI, uh, portrayed as animals, uh, half, um, half and half, I guess. <laughs> um, so this is another example of uh, Marie Antoinette portrayed um, as a demon. There were a lot of these um, demonic um, I think this is the same one. A lot of the demonic uh, representations of her. Let me see if I can find another one. Uh, this is another one. Uh, so people believe that she was not really human. She could not be human after all if she behaved um, uh, in such a way. So um, Marie Antoinette, she was very naive and she didn't pay attention to the rumors. She didn't fight back. But um, her way at the time of fighting back against all these rumors that tried to um, dehumanize her as a woman was to create portraits. So um, she favored female artists um, and in fact um, uh, she favored a lot of minorities in uh, her small circle of uh, friends and allies. 
But um, what I'm going to show you right now, it's some of the portraits that she created in order to fight back against, um, you've seen this one, this is probably the most famous one, fight back, I think this is the one that Elizabeth did against all the propaganda. So um, uh, another one um, that's um, very interesting and also she has another one that I don't have with her and her two uh, children. Uh, I think she had four kids. She had four kids. Um, one of them died before the revolution. One of them died after. And she was a good mom, in fact, and she was a good wife. Uh, there were reports that she was um, very well respected by her husband and they had a good relationship. Um, and uh, most historians uh, say that the reason what the, the true reason why she was so hated was because uh, she uh, was very independent. So being a royal at the time at the time meant to be constantly in the public eye and she just didn't want to be part of it. So uh, she didn't want her uh, sexuality to be open. So that's why she kept things private. Um, she didn't want um, uh, her uh, private life to be a matter of public opinion. So because of that, um, she, uh, you know, she ended up uh, being executed. So her execution was mostly a symbol. Um, uh, at the time, uh, people were starving. In France, uh, France was in debt. Um, Louis the Sixteenth financed the American Revolution uh, because they wanted to um, they wanted to humiliate uh, England at the time. So uh, there were a lot of things that went wrong, and she was caught up with all those things. Did she represent a lot of things that were not supposed to happen, or that there were? uh really unjust at the time probably yes but her death and her execution execution was a metaphor um uh for the um uh we would say how we would say this the um the removal or the, the a metaphor for um squashing uh women's rights so she wasn't a feminist um at all but sh uh, a lot of feminists um consider her as an inspiration um uh, the way she lived so the um the webinar um the, in particular let's just get back to <laughs> what we're going to paint <clears throat> it's something that we did last year oh by the way yes so this is uh you cannot see a lot that's going on <laughs> but this is another cartoon she was uh supposedly rumored to have an affair with um the marquis of lafayette uh, the Marquis of Lafayette was a very important figure because she was a Frenchman who fought in the American Revolutionary War. So he was very, very well respected. In <laughs> Sorry about the uh, pause. Very well respected in America and also very well respected in France. So people thought that, you know, these two were uh, having an affair. Um, in fact, not only they were not having an affair, but uh, they, they, Marie Antoinette didn't trust the Lafayette. Um, because Lafayette had uh, some um, uh, opinions, political opinions, that were not very much supportive of the royal family at the time. But nevertheless, there were plenty of um, uh, cartoons depicting, this one is very interesting, depicting Lafayette and uh, Marie Antoinette, again, in a very um, dehumanizing position uh, as, a, as a sex addict, basically. So... Um, people in France didn't uh, like Lafayette either because um, he was in charge of protecting the royal family. In fact, he tried to um, help them escape when they both uh, they were both in jail, but uh, uh, the things uh, didn't turn out that well for the royal family. So, um, yes. Uh, so going back to the webinar, what we're going to do uh, tomorrow, uh, it's something that we started doing last year. Um, the webinar's title is going to be, uh, it's going to be Marie's Wigs. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint um, 18th century um, wigs the same way that we did uh, last year. So this is an example of the painting, one of the paintings that we did last year. Uh, this is by, again, another... Um, painter named Elizabeth, but this time uh, uh, the Elizabeth is a contemporary one. 
But yeah, we'll bring examples and visual references of um, 18th century inspired wigs. And then uh, we'll do portraits uh, or rather still lifes of the wigs and only showing heads uh, from the neck up. Um, so it's going to be um, tongue in cheek about the decapitation of uh, this figure and then also uh, the representation of elaborate uh, elaborate wigs at the time. So uh, the wig thing was also something that was mocked um, in caricatures and cartoons at the time. This is a, an example of an illustration of an 18th century lady um, uh, wearing an impossible wig. Another example of a very exaggerated wig um, at the time. So these were supposed to mock um, the uh, ladies of the court and the noble um, class, in the noble class. Another example of a cartoon mocking uh, Marie Antoinette in the uh, shape of an animal, a dove. And then uh, Lafayette, it's uh, here it's a rooster. So you can see the submissive position and I don't know what the deal was on, uh, what the deal was in regards of um, uh, the whole um, situation between, between those two. But yeah, that's another example of the deep hate. So I've, we've been doing some research and we found out that people in France today, I'm, I'm just going to say people in France, knowing perfectly well that generalizations are not good. Uh, they really don't care about uh, Marie Antoinette the same way that... Um, uh, people uh, outside of France <laughs> are infatu infatuated by her. So um, we uh, looked into what people think in France today and uh, she's still deeply hated. Uh, there is a very small group of people that are uh, still royalists. Um, Marie Antoinette and her husband were uh, buried um, uh, in um, a named graveyard, graveyard, uh, I think they were buried like 15 feet uh, below ground because uh, they didn't want any remains to become uh, relics for uh, future royalists. Well, in fact, in the 1800s, uh, mid 1800s, uh, someone was in charge of the um, discovering the remains of Marie Antoinette and Louis the Sixteenth, and in fact, they found them. Uh, they found um, bones of Marie Antoinette and they were able to identify them at the time um, despite the fact that they didn't have uh, DNA testing be because uh, one of the bones uh, had a garter uh, that was made by her um, uh, surrounding the bone uh, so now the bones are buried in a chapel in Paris that uh, it's infamous because uh, uh, there's one day in during the year that people go visit the chapel, mostly royalist and um, uh, very um, uh, re religious fanatics, I, I should say. They were both Cath Catholics, by the way. Uh, they go there and they do some sort of like celebration. So there are some relics. And, and in fact, um, there is this uh, relic that the British Museum has with a hair, a lock of hair from... Marie Antoinette. There's this uh, legend that we are really um, infatuated about. Uh, apparently, when she tried, when they tried to escape, they were headed towards Austria. They were caught before um, reaching the border, and then they were sent back, or they were brought back to Paris. And the trip uh, between uh, the border of Austria and Paris was a very, very long one in which apparently uh, one night Marie Antoinette overnight, um, her hair uh, just became white. Uh, so I just I think that's uh, I don't think that's possible, but maybe it is. But apparently because of the, sor the sorrow and the pain that she um, found herself in, uh, so her hair just turned to white. And this is a lock of hair. Uh, from that time after uh, apparently overnight um, her hair her hair just turned to uh, you know uh, all too white. The British Museum has this uh, relic and since our painting webinar is going to be related to hair and painting hair and painting 
uh, wigs. Uh, we thought this could be a very good slide to end the presentation. We hope this was informative and interesting. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below and also in the comments in our YouTube channel if you uh, watch the whole presentation. Um, here's what you can do. You can go to our website, rooflesspainters.com and register for the webinar. And we spend two hours painting together. Everything's remote. You don't have to have all the materials. Uh, every level is welcome. And what we do is we paste the assignment in a way that you can follow it. Uh, you, we break down um, the session. Um, people joining us um, have different levels. We have a uh, shared uh, photo folder in which we dump uh, the work in progress. We do some critique group, um, some critique, and um, we reconvene uh, the week after or after a few days to uh, check on the work, see if uh, someone had the opportunity to work further on that. And um, also, um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's good uh, for our sanity, it keeps us grounded and uh, please join us again tomorrow, Friday, starting 11 Pacific time. Uh, Maurice uh, Wiggs um, is going to be the theme of this year. Tomorrow, it's the anniversary of her execution. And up to this day, um, you will see cartoons still, still. People make cartoons of Marie Antoinette replacing her face with someone else's face. You, you name it. Um, uh, politicians of any uh, party and any uh, ideology. Um, we find that these cartoons are not super popular because uh, obviously uh, they're very misogynistic in uh, nature. But up to this day, after so many years, so many hundreds of years, um, yeah, uh, Marie Antoinette still a figure that is controversial, a figure that it's been uh, used as uh, propaganda to criticize a certain way of life. And um, yeah, that's where we are right now. And um, join us tomorrow. Um, thanks, everyone. And um, yes, uh, um, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Dina, thanks for being here. Zorn palette is coming next week, <laughs> but you can do it with a Zorn palette. Uh, so we had a lot of requests after our tutorial. Watch our tutorial. It's free uh, about the Zorn palette. It's amazing. And we're going to use that as a, an inspiration for our webinar uh, next week. So it's coming. But yes. Um, and all right, you guys. Yay. I'll see you. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.